Okay, so I am back with another video about WASPOS on the Pine64 Pine Time. Um, and I'm going to show you a bunch of things today about how we can set about doing application development. Because so I've put a lot of work over the last couple of weeks into improving the application model and making it easier to write and install applications onto the device. So um, I've got a basic application here. It's a settings application, it's super simple. Um, but that is the entire app on the screen right now. So we've got um, some stuff to import the WASP environment. Um, the icons is part of some experimental work I'm doing with the launcher at the moment. Um, but the main application, we've got the foreground callback, which is the only mandatory um, call into the application. Um, and that results in us doing a draw and um, registering to receive touch events. We've then got the callback to receive touch events. Whenever we get the touch event, we change the current brightness of the machine. And then finally, we've got the display drawing itself. So underscore draw will show us a couple of strings, brightness and settings, just to help us navigate. It's not an attractive application because I've not put much effort into the draw code yet. Um, and then we've got update, which just shows the current uh, mode we're in, whether we've got the backlight in low, medium or high. And that's the entire application. And there are a few other bits and pieces sitting here below, which is some of my experimental work with the launcher. But that's always to go. So. Um, the first thing I'm going to show you is the simulator. So when you write an application, the first thing you probably want to do is load it into the simulator. So we can load a simulator down here, and it says Control-C to stop. So I can stop it, um, and perhaps I'm going to import my settings application. And it's going to give me an error. I put an error in to show you the kind of point of the simulator. The simulator's so quick, so you can find problems really, really quickly. Uh, we can then go in and fix them. Um, so if I go into the settings application right now, I happen to know that I just removed a colon there to give us an error. Um, so again, then we can go back, we can run the simulator, um, and we'll do from apps.settings, import settings app, um, and then we can say add it to the system, which is just a register. So we're registering a new app with the system so that it will appear. And then we're starting the system running again so that we can interact with it. So it's just like you do on a real watch if you're trying to interact with it. So we can then select the watch, we can slide over, we've got our settings application, I can press on it. When I press it, you can see the simulated backlight is changing. We can still scroll around to the other tests that we've got. So we've got some various uh, tests and modes, benchmarks, things like that. Uh, interestingly, that benchmark now is almost exactly the same number as you'd see on the real watch. Partly that's because my laptop is quite busy doing some encoding, otherwise it'd be a little bit quicker, but that is about the same performance draw-wise that you would see on the real machine, which is kind of cute. Um, I will add that my laptop is a little bit elderly at this stage. So okay, so we've got the simulator, we're happy with our application. So I'm gonna uh, close down the simulator now. And we'd like to test it on the real machine instead. So um, I can use Wasp tool to, we'll start off doing a, a test. So after we've tested our app in the simulator, the next thing we like to do is to uh, run the same app without making it reset proof, without making it automatic. So we run it by hand. So we can go into Wasp, apps, settings, and copy to target. Um, and if we do an eval afterwards, um, we can have that same wasp.system.register uh, settings app that we saw above. Uh, and that will run, it will spend a little time ticking now. It's, it's copying the Python file over Bluetooth to the target. And um, when it's finished copying over, it will install it with the system so that it will be in the swipe list for the application. So it's about a screen and a half. So these dots will carry on going while it's copying the, the data across. Um, so, like I say, I, I do mean to change these dots for a percentage, but I haven't got around to doing that. It would be just nice to know how long I've got to ad lib for, if nothing else. Um, so yeah, those dots become percent. We then run the settings app. You can see the Python um, chevrons, which say the command did not produce any output. Um, and now, when we go into the watch itself, we've got a brightness setting. And I hope you can see when I press the screen that the setting goes from low, medium, sorry I'm pressing too swift, high, we can then go in hopefully we can see some of the other applications we've got, flashlight, 
and back to the clock. Now it's running bright, so maybe you can see the difference, maybe you can't in the, um, the thing. But yeah, that looked great. We had our backlight program and it was working correctly. So there's one final thing we can do now, um, which is we can go to hospital and um, I think we'll do a help actually because I've got more things. Upload, minus, minus one upload, upload. So upload and we can also upload the apps, which will copy it to the file system on the target, something I showed in the last video. So it's the same set of dots going on the screen, uh, and I'll have to keep talking for as many dots as we get. So that's going to copy it to the target file system. And then the last thing we want to do is make it durable at reset, because it's clearly much more awesome if you've written your application that you don't have to keep using Wasp tool every time to change it. So um, what we're going to do after this, we're going to edit the main.py, which is the entry point for the, um, for the watch. We'll add the same two commands we ran on the simulator. In fact, perhaps what I'll do while I'm talking is go back and copy them. So it's these two lines here. Uh, so I've got that copied. Um, so that's now sitting on the target ready to be used in a file called settings.py. So we can now go to main. Um, so this is the basic main program that is installed in the um, system by default, which we can override. It's designed so that this is the only Python file that you can override from the standard set. The rest are all frozen on the device. Uh, but this one we can override. So we'll say uh, from settings, import settings app. And we will also register it. So it turns out I didn't actually use the <laughs> stuff that I copied earlier, but such is life. Uh, register settings app. And having done that, uh, the last step is we can upload main as well. So this will override the copy of main that is in the um, file system in the first place. Oops, not in there, main.py. So that's going to change. It, the bleeding file name gets stripped off, so it ends up just using the first bit of the file name. So now, if I do our five second long, re long set repress, five second long press reset, then we get our pine logo, we get our bootloader. Um, and from here, I can relaunch the application, get my logo, clock comes up, and this time the settings app is already there. So we've arranged it so that our settings app runs um, from boot, which is really cool. So that's what we'd like to get to. Um, it's now possible without doing any C coding, without anything else, that we can um, get into the device and we can... Um, you know, configure it, get it how we want it to be. Uh, you can add your apps. You don't need to do any C coding to add apps. So that's where we are now with the current system. I will just show you one thing, which is the launcher that's being worked on, a quick preview. So uh, the next step for this is color, but we are in a position now to be having a custom launcher, which we can bring up to launch applications. And this is page, so if there were more than four applications on the device, we'd be able to switch between them. Uh, there's a little bit more work to do with the various, uh, I've called them rings, it's a kind of UE concept about which applications you go through on a quick ring in the beginning of power. So the idea is the clock and maybe a stopwatch, heart rate monitor, things like that will be on the quick ring. Um, and then some of the applications won't appear in the quick ring and you use the launcher to bring those up. So that's the kind of UE concept I'm playing with at the moment. So that's a quick preview of where we're going. Uh, and with that, I'm done. So I shall see you in the next video.